I just truly believe I was, I was meant to, to be here. Pre-draft, things like that, meeting with different teams, like I could have gone earlier in the draft. I kind of told my agent, you know, pre-draft, I was like, out of all the teams I met with, Toronto was the one that kind of opened my eyes. I kind of just want to be like a, a bright light of wherever I go. I want to be able to, to inspire. You know, there's a lot of kids in Toronto that um, they, they really just want to be the next great, you know, Jose Bautista or, you know, Kyle Lowry or things like that, you know. And every time I take that mana, I'm not just playing for myself. I'm not just playing for my family. I'm playing to make everybody in this country happy and proud. And it, it, it's really exciting. Early in his young career, and a couple pretty good ones in this lineup for the Yankees and Judge and Stanton, but he has absolutely manhandled them. He's used the slider at times, he's used the slider. I'm too early in my career to not appreciate every single game, mm. though. Uh, I enjoy being out there with the guys, uh, I enjoy the traveling, and I, I enjoy the city to city, meeting new fans, meeting new people, different cultures. that the season can be long and injuries and things like that and it's definitely the most hectic out of every other sport I would say. There's going to be stretches where your legs just aren't moving the way that they're supposed to be moving. Your arm doesn't feel as good as it you know it should and playing 162 games in, in six months and you're back out there the next day. You lose a game and you're back out there the next day. You win a game you're back out there the next day. We give so much to this game so much time, so much sacrifice away from our families, so much hard work, and we just, we, we love the game, you know, we do anything for it, and it's, it's something you kind of dream of as a kid, you know. Right-hander Alec Manoa broke in last year with a bang, he was a top prospect for them, and he's lived up to the billing. LeMahieu down on strikes. This day and age with the shift, they, they don't change the way the pitcher goes about. Rizzo down on strikes, do what? To complete the play. So the Yankees go down one, two, three again. It was like coming at that sweet spot, right? Where it's like you're leaving the door of development and now entering this new wave of high expectation World Series conversation. Yeah. Was that an expectation overall that this team had for itself, or was that an expectation that outside noise had for this group? Um, I think there's definitely a lot of out outside noise. Mm -hmm. um, as a team, we know what we can do. Like, we mm -hmm. know that we can win a lot of games, we know that we're really good. Um, but <clears throat> putting the expectation on World Series, like, that's, uh, there's a lot of things that go into, like, that happening. Right. So our focus isn't, like, skipping through all that and then, okay, let's just go win a World Series. No, it's, hey, we got to prepare every day. We got to win series every day. Hey, go five and two every week or four and three every week. We're going to be in a good spot at the end. Like, just, like, breaking it down into, like, little things that we believe are more important than, or are we gonna win a World Series? Right. You know, so we believe if we do these little things, um, then we'll be happy at the end. Is it tough to have that concept, that understanding, that buy-in, almost translatable for a fan base that wants to win now? Yeah, and there's there's a huge understanding of mm -hmm. everyone, everyone wants to win, and, and, and we want to win. You know, that's the biggest thing, but we also understand that, you know, we're young, there's gonna be some developmental phases, and we're gonna go through some rough patches, but. We know that we're really talented. We know we work really hard um, and we believe in each other. We love playing with each other. We got some of the best players on, in the world, in the league, on our team, you know? So um, the, the fans will be getting what they want. There's like these like Japanese style like, like noodles that we have in our clubhouse. And uh, Hanjin Ru, he likes to eat them all the time, but there's this one noodle it's like spicy, spicy, and nobody eats it. Like I think they even offered like one of the rookies like 500 bucks. Like if you eat to the eat whole, it? eat the whole thing. Yeah, like and he couldn't get through a bite. He's like, this is the spicy one. I was like, hey chef, I, I want some of that. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> He's like, it might ruin your day. And I'm like, all right, go ahead. So like, it's like a, it's not even it's like one of those like ramens like like you. It's not like soupy. It's like right. a pasty. Like, ah, like a pace, so like he starts getting this pace going or whatever, and like it gets to me, and I can just smell. <laughs> like right when it gets in front of me, like it just like opened my pores, and I, and I was like, all right. I grabbed my chopsticks, I started going like that, and I took a bite, and like the competitor in me was just like, 
You just stomach it. We're just gonna keep eating it. We're just and I just kept eating it. And the chef was like, "Is that not hot?" And I was like, "No, it's pretty good." <laughs> I just kept eating it, finished the thing of ramen, and just left. And I was like, "Oh my god, I need some." <laughs> One day you have 50,000 people telling you you're the best. Then the next day you can have 100,000 people telling you how, how terrible you are, you know? So uh, just trying to block out some of that noise and, you know, like, like I said, make sure the mentals are good, make sure your family's good, make sure my body's feeling good and, and all that stuff, and uh, just go out there and compete. These glasses are kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see these. <laughs> I got the black ones because I feel like I can wear black a little better. Wow, these things just fell right in front of my eyes. It's crazy. I mean, it's giving you bangs. Bangs are definitely in. I kind of actually mess with you. Would you actually wear that? I always wanted to have dreads, you know? Do <laughs> you actually want to have dreads? <laughs> How many shoes are in your collection? A lot. Like, what's uh, a lot? I don't know. Safe space. It's got to be near almost a thousand, maybe. You have probably yeah, a probably a few hundred. Them. Yeah, I don't know. How many of the thousands do you actually wear? It's sad to say, but they're most in my storage in Miami. I, oh. I didn't bring most of them with me. Oh. So they're just <laughs> but when I go it. home, when I go home, it's like, yeah, here we go. It's like a I get to wear candy everything. Store. Yeah. Is there one that you're like, I saved up so much for this? Yeah, there's a, there's a. Actually, this one wasn't even about the money. It was just about finding it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dornbacher Four. Mm -hmm. It's like. Uh, Kind of like a navy blue, has like the green on the side, like on the fours, like you know those little straps that yeah. it goes with, and then it has a neon green laces, Superman logo on the tongue, has like little details and stuff all throughout the shoe. And as a kid, like I told you earlier, I was always going on like that marketplace, things like that, and I was always see that shoe, and I think it came out like I want to say like 2008 maybe or 2010, yeah. something like that. It had came out, and uh, I was like, man, that shoe, that shoe, and it was going for like a couple grand. Yeah. And I was like, damn. So I obviously never never got it and then even you know when I got to the league and stuff I was like I told my plugs like hey man I need this shoe I need this shoe <laughs> this specific and, shoe. and they're like bro that shoe's like 12 13 years old it's hard wow. to find like in good condition like that'll be fit fit you so yeah I ended up finding one <clears throat> how the world goes round in circle on Facebook Stop. And this dude was selling them, and, and he was like, they're they're used, but they're, they're like a nine and a half out of ten. And I was like, nah, I gotta see these things. Yeah. So like, send me pictures, like FaceTime them, like they look really good, like really mint condition. The only thing is, they were a thirteen, and I was like, I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll, squeeze, I'll, I'll, squeeze, I'll squeeze into them. I'll them. squeeze. I know those. Every sneakerhead knows that. <laughs> I'll squeeze. You have a couple sizes, yes. you know. I like I can wear like a thirteen to a fifteen. Yeah. You know? Like comfortable yeah. in a fourteen, but. We could take the soul out, we can add a soul, like, you know? I think the biggest thing is like the, the feel of it. Yeah. You know, like I, I, uh, some things are like really silky that I like, like just nice and, yeah. and, and comfy. And then like, I, I don't like that super bulky, like sleeves yeah. stay printed. Like I like things to like fall on the body a little bit. Yeah. But like, if you're looking for like button down shirts, you kind of want them to be thick. Like have a little thickness. Yeah, yeah. This, this feels nice, this yeah. I always see like brands and designs and stuff like that. I think this is just, there's a lot of things I grab that I'm like, man, this is really cool. And then they don't have my size or things like that. So it's always a problem. So I'm like, you know what, what if I did my own thing? Right. You know, so um, that's always the biggest thing for me. It's like, it, is it nice? But do you, do you have my size? Right. It's the follow up question. But yeah. do you have my size? So there was a, there was a play when I was in college and people would like tend to mistake in my size and I can I can kind of be a little quick yeah. when I'm on the mountain, you know, like, <laughs> big, like a big puma, yeah. you know? And there was a play in college that I had made, it was kind of just like really dynamic and, and uh, the, the announcer started saying like, oh man, Mano ran off the mountain, puma-like and like all this stuff and some of my family and friends like started calling me it and my, <laughs> my girlfriend's mom started calling me it and like it kind of like just stuck a little right. bit and then I think someone had said it to me like around one of the players like in, in spring training and then it kind of was just like hey they call you they call you puma they call you big puma and then it's kind of kind of just stuck yeah you like the nickname i i i don't mind it 
I don't mind. There are some people that are just like, I'm stuck with it. Yeah. There's nothing. I don't mind it. You want to come in Big Puma, then, you know, I, I, I'll take it. I, I look at it as a positive way. Everybody fall in Big Puma when you see him on the road. I truly believe when, when, when our, all our time comes and it's time to go to heaven, you know, the, the question is going to be, you know, why should I let you in? And I don't want my answer to be, well, I have a couple Cy Youngs. My ERA was quite free. Yeah, no, my, no. my ERA was good. You know, I, got, I got a Cy Young or a World Series. Like, I, I, I want it to be like I helped a lot of people. I built a legacy and I inspired a lot of people. And, and, and I think that's that, that means more than, than the wins and the losses, you know? Where does that come from? Um, just how I grew up, uh, how my parents raised me. Uh, we didn't come from a whole lot. With the 11th selection of the 2019 MLB Draft, the Toronto Blue Jays select Alec Manoa, a right-handed pitcher from West Virginia University. Let's talk about your mom. She is just such a big part of your story. When you think back to your relationship, how much of a big role did she play with not just you, but also your brother in getting into the game? Yeah, yeah, huge. And, um... I would just say in life, you know, like she's she's kind of just been like an inspiration, the way she goes about her business, like the things she does for us, um, just just the way that she she raised us. Um, always be humble and always be hardworking. Uh, don't blame it on other things, other surroundings, like always look inward. Uh, how can you be better? Things like that. So um, she's played a huge part in, in, in not just baseball, but, but in life. When you made your debut last year, mm -hmm. did you realize how much FaceTime your mother got? I did until after. <laughs> and like after the game, like they were just like, other media like people and stuff were like, man, your mom stole the show. I was like, what do you mean? Like your mom's famous. I'm Nobody like, saw you, I'm not gonna like, what lie. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I go and look at the highlights and stuff after and she, they just got all her emotions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was, it was awesome. What, did it make you emotional to see? Yeah. Yeah. Still does. Mm. Sometimes I go go back and just watch the video and I'm just like, let's get it today. Let's go check it out. The reason I got my mom the car was basically, you know, she's she's been the biggest part of my life, you know, since I was born. She's she's my rock, she's my entire support system and um, that was just a, a little way of I was able to yes, show sir. my appreciation towards her, you know, was getting her uh a new pair of wheels. Susie got some wheels now. That's it. Some wheels and some new shoes, huh? Right? Hey. <laughs> so over the years, everything that, you know, she's done for me and to just be able to repay that um, in one day, you know, and I'll just continue to, to, to be able to try and repay everything that she's done for me over a, a lifetime, you know, so even though it's impossible, just little things that I can do. Coming from some negative environments that I grew up in, sometimes you don't have direction. You know, sometimes you don't know which way to go. There might not be a role model there that's like, hey, I want to do it like that. Like, this is what he did, I want to do that. There's not a ton of them, you know, uh, particularly where I grew up in, you know? So I want to be a role model for the kids where I grew up, you know, in, in the city of Toronto for, for basically just anyone that I can kind of inspire to be great and, and to kind of lead them in, in, in the right path instead of getting caught in some negative environments. I think everything kind of just starts with the heart to win and the competitiveness and drives to want to win and everything else just falls in place.